Caitlin Clark, do you think that there is something at play here with all these WNBA players purposely wanting to attack her? She is what they all aspire to be and will never be. It's the new kid, the popular kid coming in. We're going to beat her up. I really think it was just a bully syndrome that the rich, popular kid coming into play and these girls were going to show her who's boss. sports caitlin clark i know you're a big fan i am a big fan she just got eliminated from the playoffs but um there was a lot of drama surfacing with the eye pokes and all these intentional fouls on her do you think that there is something at play here with all these WNBA players purposely wanting to attack her or do you think it's just oh she's just getting you know fouled head like hard here's how i look at it i don't know if the play on the on the court is racial i really don't think so i think she's famous I think she brought what none of them ever could. She is what they all aspire to be and will never be. So it's the new kid, the popular kid coming in. We're going to beat her up and we're going to take shots wherever we can. So I really think it was just a bully syndrome that the rich, popular kid coming into play and these girls were going to show her who's boss. But in time, she's boss and it's going to be her league. So whether you like it or not, it was Michael Jordan's NBA um, and he sets a standard, and there was many greats before him. Mm -hmm. I'm not taking that, but what Michael Jordan, nobody can argue that he brought an element to the sport that was never there before, right? Mm -hmm. Caitlin Clark has done that for the WNBA. So these women were always complaining about, you know, bring the dollars. Mm -hmm. Well, she set the standard now. So I don't know what it was all about, but Caitlin Clark, um, she got her ass kicked this year, no doubt. And anybody who says otherwise is, is just a fool and, and is, is just doesn't want to see it. What about her made her so marketable? Like, why was there this shift where people wanted to watch the WNBA? She's the best female basketball player to ever take the court. So she's the best. So if you're going to ask why her, because she's the best ever. She's the number one. And I guarantee you, just like Michael Jordan, there were many great basketball players, but there will never be a Michael Jordan. I don't know if there will ever be a Caitlin Clark. So there'll be other women that come along and play a great game. But she set the standard of how to conduct yourself, how to play, what you want to work on. The girl is relentless in her workout. You know, she shoots those threes, but her workout is much like the mindset of Kobe. So it's interesting because I've seen a lot on the news lately of players talking about Caitlin Clark fans, you know, the racial slurs at them. And there's been a lot of people talking about how they want Caitlin Clark to use her platform to speak out against her fans. It's kind of the same thing we've seen with politicians. Like, oh, you're not like denouncing your fans. You're not denouncing people that are, you know, targeting or attacking people. Like, do you think that's up to Caitlin Clark to be monitoring her fans and controlling what they say both on and off the court? I don't believe in anybody monitoring anybody. It's not up to her to tell her fans what to say, what not to say. Period. It's yeah. it, if they if they have if they have you know negative things to say, um, that's their right to say it, and that's not her job. Her job is to play. Mm -hmm. uh, and to be honest, I don't care what K Caitlin Clark or anybody else, any other sports figure, what they have to say. So I don't care what they have to say. I don't care what the fans have to say. You do your job and play basketball. We'll do our job and pay the you know exorbitant amount of money to to watch you play and everybody goes home and lives their lives. Yeah, because there was the WNBA commissioner a couple of weeks ago. They had asked her a question about this in particular of just players being attacked for whether it's, you know, racial or gender or whatever identities that they, uh, sexual orientation, all of that. And she didn't really answer the question, but she was mainly talking about, oh, well, like, you know, now the league is getting attention and we're making money and like viewership's going up. But she didn't like target that specific issue and like you said which i agree with is how are you gonna go about monitoring that right especially the commissioner she doesn't monitor social media caitlin clark doesn't monitor social media mm -hmm. like she's not gonna go on here and like make a stance but to kind of shift into the next topic which is a little bit of uh business lifestyle mm -hmm. people like steph curry and other players and coaches are using their platforms to endorse certain political candidates what is your stance on that as a business owner yourself like are, are you the type to to want to donate to certain campaigns like what do you think that people should just stay out of it they don't live and i'm talking about the elites i'm talking about the elite stars of sports and in hollywood and otherwise 
you don't live in our lives. Whatever you vote for is not going to affect you either way, whether you vote for Republican or De it doesn't touch them. Their wealth has made them at a level that your vote is is it can affect the middle class. It affects the lower class, it, it, you know, the upper middle class. But once you get to a certain amount of wealth, it doesn't affect you. So I think your opinion is not relative to the issues that most people are going to feel when you vote a certain way. I wish these stars would just keep their mouth shut and um, do what we pay you to do, which mm -hmm. is coach or play or perform. And it's interesting, too, from a corporate level, I was looking at just seeing the, the presidential candidates who are running, just taking a look at some of these big corporate entities who are funding their platforms um, and their you know presidential race. And since you're a business owner, like how do you feel about businesses doing that? Like we're seeing Microsoft and Google. Like, mm -hmm. do you think there's a conflict of interest there? One hundred percent. Individuals can can support the candidate and and make their donations, but businesses giving money, especially these billion dollar businesses giving you know however much to the not even to the candidate to the super PACs mm -hmm. because it's unlimited. You're you're buying that person and so now they owe you right so and and i you don't think there's backroom talk you don't think that there's co talks between the ceos or the boards of these large corporations mm -hmm. and the candidates themselves saying listen i'm going to give some money but when you get into office this is what i want on the back end mm -hmm. so it was never supposed to be that way it was supposed to be the candidates are for the people not the businesses and the businesses were supposed to be a beneficiary of the hard work of the people, but never a direct line from business to candidate. It was always supposed to be candidate to the people and then the people to the business. And that that the people was supposed to be the filter between the two. Do you feel like there is like this push to like want to get companies to have to speak out on certain issues? And um, so where do you draw that line of like, you know, if you're staying silent on something, does it mean you're complicit or are you just trying to completely just stay out of it? I'm in the staffing business. People don't care what I have to say. They want to know, can they come here and get a job, right? And yeah. that's so I think if every corporation just stuck to bottling soda, putting food on the shelves, you know what I'm saying? Whatever realm they're in, just stick to that. Yeah. Just do that. And that's what, when I come to your store, that's what I'm there. I'm there to you know, buy from you, um, but I don't need your opinion. I don't need your <laughs> input on any of this stuff. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just shut up and then do and do your job and I'll do my job and then we'll go to the polls and then we'll put our vote in and everybody's happy for that. But yeah, it's definitely been frustrating, especially around this time of year, because like you said, I just want to be able to go to the grocery store and get my groceries. I don't really care where Sprouts politically aligns, and I don't want to hear their opinions. Um, the same thing with anywhere else I go, the gas station, Circle K. Like, I don't care where you align. I literally just want to go and get gas. Yeah. Or I want to just go to the gym. And it's just during these times, like every four years, it's like, oh. Yeah got to sit here and listen to it again or oh if you don't speak up on this you're complicit with what's going on and it's like no i just like you said don't necessarily know enough about it to speak on it yeah there's always facts that you know we have to wait for especially yep. if there's a case going on or something everyone's so quick to want to discuss something without knowing what actually happened so it's it's a weird i think we're in like a weird time now especially with social media Everyone wants to have a voice and a platform, and if you don't use your platform the right way, like you know, you get criticized for yeah. it. I think you're right. Yeah, we're in the we're in the era of of um, instant information, and we are in the era of pick a side. Um, otherwise, if you don't say you're for us, then you're for them. You know what I'm saying? So if you don't if you don't speak up in our in our favor, then you've sided with. And it's not, sometimes people just don't have an opinion. Or sometimes people just don't care. I haven't watched an NFL game probably in five, maybe six years. Wow. Yeah. I, and you know how much I love football. Football coach doesn't yeah. watch NFL. I don't watch NFL. And the reason why is because I, I watch football to get away from life. And when they bring that shit into the sport, I don't care what the cause is. It could be a cause that I'm even passionate about, right? So I'm big on adoption, and, and that's yeah. my big. So I don't care if it was for that. Just come in. Put the NFL logo on the field, put the players on the field, and play football. Mm -hmm. That's all I care about. That's yeah. all I'm there for. That's what I paid for. I don't care about any other message that you want to give me about any other thing that's going on in society. I really don't care. Mm -hmm. I just don't care. And I don't care. Anybody. It's just not an issue. I want to watch football. Yeah. And I don't want to think about the problems of the world because there's not just one. There's about 500 problems in the world. Yeah. And are we going to put all 500 on the field? 
No. So and why do we pick and choose? So why do we one? pick and choose? So I don't care. I don't care what your issue is. Um, I don't care what you your cause is. I want to watch football. And then when I get outside the stadium, if I choose to pick up a cause and, and run with it, yeah. that's on me. Yeah, because I know that, you know, they do offer a lot of those, you know, charitable opportunities in the NBA and the NFL. But I think, yeah, when it starts to get like so political, you're just like, I see enough of this shit on social media. Yeah, I don't. I don't need more of it here. No. But it's interesting because I don't know if you saw this because you said you don't, you're not, haven't been really watching football, but I'm sure you've heard in the news of certain people uh, having to like throw out certain political hats because they can't get into the, into the stadium for mm-hmm. it. Uh, there's a Mets fan that's suing the Mets because they made him throw out his political gear. Um, you could have a stance on it or not, but like, I feel like if, if the shoe was on the other foot, it would have been allowed, but because certain security guards had a certain feeling or some mm-hmm. type of way about it. Um, how would you feel if you're a paying customer, a season ticket holder, and you walk into a stadium and they say, you can't wear that hat and I won't let you in unless you throw it away? Mm-hmm. How would you feel about that? I don't wear any political gear, but um, and and I don't wear it because I just want to draw attention to myself. Yeah. That's just my personality. So yeah. I, I, have I my, respect it. I, I have my views on things, and I so I wouldn't wear a, a MAGA hat and I wouldn't wear a BLM hat. It's a political statement. So MAGA hats are a political statement of mm. Donald Trump or the right. Yep. BLM is a political group of the Democratic Party. How would I feel? I wouldn't wear one. That's just my personality. Yeah, I, I, I just just don't I just don't care. And again, if I'm going out, I'm going out with my family. So I want to enjoy my family. Yeah. So I don't want to wear something that's going to draw attention to myself. That's going to make someone say something that's going to ruin my night. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, it, you know what I'm saying? But if and I, I do feel like people might do that on purpose. I think people do oh, want to start yeah, to agitate yeah, yeah. people. So that's what I'm saying. And so, yeah, so if someone goes to a game, they're doing it on purpose. They <laughs> want to wear the hat. They want to stir the pot. They, I think they have a right to do it, but I, I think, do think there are other motives. It's not just like, I'm going to pick this hat out. And I just feel like wearing the hat today. I think it's like, why are you specifically choosing a sporting event to wear a political statement on your body? Yeah, I just, I think that people should be able to wear whatever they want to wear. Mm-hmm. Whatever they want to wear, you can't, you know, so because let's face it, some kids have been kicked out of school for having an American flag. Yeah. So if we start saying you can't wear MAGA, you can't wear BLM, right, to try to appease both sides. Yeah. Well, what's next? Someone's like, well, I'm offended by the flag, so you can't wear anything with a flag. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I just, as much as we don't want to see it, I just think that we walk down a path that we shouldn't be walking down when we say this is what you wear and this is what you can't wear. Wear whatever you want to wear. You're going to draw attention to yourself. And that's you, you know, that's that person. Let them do that. But for me, um, I'd much rather just go to a game, enjoy the time with my family and and um, leave the political stuff at home. I agree. Well, that actually segues into my next topic with lifestyle and Mm. people's particular lifestyle choices. I know you're one that you want to be able to say what you want, wear what you want, do what you want and be able to do so freely, especially when it comes to social media. So. we're going to talk a little bit about body positivity and fat shaming versus fat shaming. And just recently on TikTok, this girl, she amassed, I think like almost 700 over 700,000 followers on TikTok. She got banned for promoting more of like a skinny lifestyle and her, you know, she was revealing her diet. She wasn't eating a lot throughout the day. Um, But then we see shows like my obese life and we see other platforms on TikTok, especially that are actually promoting unhealthy lifestyles on the other side of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. Um, Do you think there is, I want to say maybe a body issue going on right now in terms of promoting bad lifestyles? And how do you feel about TikTok kind of taking sides? So I have four girls, right? So yep. if I was going to talk to any one of my daughters, the number one thing I always tell them already, and none of them have social media, so they're not allowed to have social. They can have social media um, their senior year and on. You don't think they sneak it? My oldest one did. Okay. Yeah, and, but but <laughs> but I had I had spies out there, so I, I had people going, "Hey, just so you know, Morgan's on, you know, whatever." So yeah. I was she was getting ratted out. So I come home <laughs> like, "Hey, you got ratted out." So anyways, and she'd have all these like candles that I wouldn't, you know, I would never know. To, yeah, she put two M's in her name and and all that stuff. So, oh my god! I tell the girls everything you see is not there if there's technology between you and what you're viewing it's not real so just look at everything as that and that everything becomes very simple so again as as real as you and i talking that's life so um if you're gonna copy if you're gonna if you're gonna be envious or if you're gonna be focused on something because you saw something make sure it's in real life we see things on social media and it's it's angles it's cameras it's filters it's Mm -hmm. it's just not real so i don't know um 
I think there is a there was a movement um, for years. I don't know if it's still out there where women who were overweight were, were praised. But if you're overweight by 150 pounds, mm -hmm. you're unhealthy. So okay. I don't know why. I don't know what's positive about sending yourself down a path of poor health. It's my advice to anybody is if you have daughters, understand that the reality is the person sitting next to you that you can physically reach out and touch and talk to. Everything else is, is fake. It was interesting when I was doing just a deep dive and researching like what TikTok allows and what it doesn't. And like, yeah, either side of the spectrum, it's unhealthy, right? If you're not eating, if you're overeating, but there is this like push and what I'm noticing, especially on TikTok, like they, they're very, uh, they monitor a lot, but they're very one-sided on a lot of different really? things. Oh yeah. I would say like, they're probably the worst out of every platform Really, when it comes to choosing sides as it pertains to like issues they deem as important or less important or extreme. And I think it goes to what you said. It's like, is it their problem that people are being influenced by them? Like, to what point do we like say, hey, you need to snap out of just watching and scrolling on social media and actually face reality? But I mean, a lot of people don't have parents like you who don't bring them back to that reality or their parents aren't home to educate them that social media can be toxic. But we see this even with people like Kim Kardashian, Taylor Swift. Like, these are such prominent figures to where like their influence takes over not just their generation but generations to follow yeah well we live in a very shallow world uh and 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 it gets more and more shallow um as the years go on the problem that we have in society is that people are so easily yeah they're just they're just influenced and so and and they're influenced not even by actions anymore it's what they see it's how, it's how the person dresses how they look um the cars that they drive everything is so amplified in the superficial parts of life mm -hmm. um, but we ignore um, every part of what people do these days and we forgive them about all their transgressions as long as they look nice drive nice you know live nice you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying and that's just the world that we live in so i don't know um but i don't know enough about tiktok and there and, but it doesn't surprise me i think all the social media companies monitor and lean towards a certain direction is there Inter a way to stop that? I mean, like, no, it's getting worse. And it's, and it's it'll get to a point. It'll get to a point where it's all washed out. And um, yeah, it's never going to get better.